Good morning, everybody. This is Cheryl Hudson, returning again this year to give you some updates on the structures. I will not be as detailed as what you've been getting. You need to go to the revision log. We're going to be covering, you know, the general usual stuff, some minor major standard changes, uh, cell revisions, things like that. If you go to the revision log, you can get more of the details. If you have questions on why we've changed it, please feel free to drop me an email or give me a call and we can discuss it. And remember, we do have the standards plans packager that was put out. It has been updated again for this year with any new standards. Minor revisions. Um, minor revisions this year, just some editorial changes, as usual, made throughout. And if you see any misspelled words or any dimensions floating off in space that we missed, somehow they tend to show up after they're published, please let me know and we'll get them fixed. Most of the editorial changes are noted in the revision log. But some of them, we just change the misspelled word typo and keep going. But here are some of the minor revisions that might be of interest. We have the four I-beam, all the sizes. We removed the insert for the intermediate diaphragms because we don't really use the intermediate diaphragms at all as along with all the dimensioning, and that's for all the sizes. We did the same thing for the Ashto type two beams. Now we had to make a minor change to this dimension for the 10 inch thick sheet pile walls because the tolerances for bending the FRP is six inch minimum diameter. So there's also this note five to tell you how to offset it, twist it a little bit if you want to tie to the uh, strands. We also have an ongoing research projects by uh, FIT. They did some testing, actually built a section of a post for the pedestrian rail and pulled on it until it the anchors came out and we found it was always concrete failure. So what we had was more than what was needed. So we reduced those depths. Index is 5.1, 404 and 405. We just had a little update on these with the pay item descriptions. Uh, it was requested that we change these to not have the delineators included in the cost. So that will be a separate pay item. On the vet vertical face retrofit, typical details and notes, it was brought to our attention. We missed, oh, this is the one we missed uh, last year. We did all the updating of the delinear spacing to, to meet with the spec, and we missed this one. So now it's consistent with the others. For our eight foot noise wall on barriers, the V groove spacing was slightly shorter than the minimum length for a precast section. So we made a small adjustment to the minimums, the maximum spacing, just to make it consistent. Index 521-600, the MSE wall coping, we added a bond breaker between the cast in place coping and the wall to prevent cracking due to set of differential shrinking. And on 521-620, it's similar to the, to the uh, noise wall, is we found the concrete barrier raised sidewalk had the minimum spacing and for precast and where the joint spacing was were slightly off, so we just made them the same. And the last of the minor revisions is a change to note 6C1 on sheet one of the precast noise walls regarding the side installed flush face panels. That's a mouthful. They have a very, very tight tolerance and we really don't recommend doing 
decide and stall if at all possible. It, it can be done, but it really is not easy. On to some more interesting things. We have the major changes. This is one that was the districts requested and we have now delivered. We have drainage slots for the single slope traffic railings. A new sheet was added to the 36 inch traffic railings. For simplicity, it has two slot sizes, six inches and 12 inches. And those are maximums. If it's six inch or less, use the six. If it's 12, but greater than six, use the other. And you'll note the vertical reinforcing changes more for the 12 inch openings. We also allow for two heights, two inches, which won't allow the passage of cans and bottles and three inches, which will. Now the height, length and actual spacing needs to be included in the plans. We don't want to just put them as close as possible willy nilly everywhere. So please work with your drainage engineer on the size and spacing. And these drainage slots need to be added only when necessary. We also added the drainage slots to the 42 inch single slopes. And we also added a height transition from the 42 inch single slopes to the 36 slash 38. Now the detailed transition is only applicable at the beginning or end of the bridge or the approach slab or a retaining wall. The detail first reduces the height only over a length of four feet. This way those larger S bars don't need to be bent in from the back, which is a field type maneuver and is difficult to do. And then when you get down in the height and you jump to the next segment on the other side of the expansion joint, you would move, you would just start with a 36 inch barrier. So you would have a two inch extra lip behind. You just move the whole backside in. If you want to add details to change, to make sure you don't have that, that's fine. You may want to detail more stuff. Otherwise you're going to have a three and a half inch ledge instead of the standard one and a half. Now index 521.610, you're probably going to see more changes to this one. We, It's very difficult because of the difference, the 36 inch, the 38 inch. We're still working on that. And so we've made some changes to the notes and referenced uh, the 36 and 42 inch for the height transitions to the guardrail connection. And just for fun, you, know, you can call it a correction if you like, one of the detail A's was changed to detail B. Now for junction slabs at the inlet drainage openings, we added a note, you should not have an opening, open joint in the barrier made within five feet of the center line of the inlet. We want that to be a continuous section in case it is impacted. Continuity is kind of a key since it doesn't have the junction slab as a counterweight. And this is a roadway index, and I don't think I heard them speak on this one. It's um, something new we added this year. Um, Joshua, one of our new hires, was instrumental in improving the designs that we had and added some nice special safety features. We're trying to meet all OSHA and we would appreciate any feedback on this one from you know maintenance to construction, anybody uh, on how it's working and please just let us know so we can continue to make improvements to this standard. Now for changes to the cell library. Now most of these were made for very small changes, but please make sure you update your cells because there are a lot of them. State Materials Office requested that we replace our list, the silica fume, mythic kaolin, and ultrafine fly ash with highly reactive positives. So we made that change and changed a whole lot of different cells. 
So we also made a change to the pile data table notes. We corrected note three for the permanent MSC wall data table and made changes to the post tension load grading summary cell. So look at those cells, make sure you update them. And you'll find that that is one of the main reasons that we also had to update our SPIs. These are the indexes that had the change for the highly reactive Poslins, and these are the ones that also had changes made. Now, standard plans instructions. A lot of these, like I said, were based on the other changes that were made to the cells because we have copies of the cells in the SPI quite often as an example. So we had to update all of those. Now on temporary bridges, there was a note that the EU, EOR was to add a parts list for the detour bridge. That's not the case, so we removed that. Uh, the contractor does that working with uh, maintenance. For the cantilever retaining wall, with the flexible approach slabs, we made changes requested by construction to better define the pavement, including the stabilization. We also made changes to pay item numbers and descriptions to grooving and planning for the approach slabs. We've there's been a change in the pay items to where the planning and grooving are no longer combined. They are now two separate pay items. So we made that change and added those numbers to those pay items that are listed in the SPI that are there just to help you. The, uh, you can get more information. Another issue we came up with is that the EORs were not separating the quantities for the box culverts by phase. So we modified the SPI to make that requirement clear. That is the same for all bridges or any structures that are done in phase construction. You need to separate those because that's how construction looks at them. Most of these were all just updates of, your, uh, of the cells. Good stuff. We had a lot of changes for just one small difference. Now the SPI, let's go back. The expansion, the expansion joint system for strip seal, this one had a, a different change. This was, we made a change to the spec to allow other materials. So we made that change and just called, instead of saying elastomeric strip seals, we now just call them joint strip seal glands. And that change was made in the spec as well. So that should be something new and we look forward to some new materials. Expansion joint systems with core joint with a backer rod, we just changed note to A. Here's more of the ch changes just related to the BOE, pay items, spec changes, instructions for the drainage slots, and the height transitions. All those were updated with notes in the SPI. So if, if you need answers to some questions, look there first. If you don't get it, give me a call. Additional information on the asphalt overlay on the junction slab. This went round and round with construction and pavement design. But we've added some information on the minimum. And we also added minimum distance the wall can be behind the traffic railing. The wall is within the clear zone, which is based on the zone of intrusion. That's on the noise walls. And of course, we had more changes to the data tables. And this ends 
the SPIs and we go on to the developmental standards. Not a whole lot has happened on, on these. Um, we, upda we have kind of stalled on updating the new numbers from the developmental design standards, which is what we still call those, to developmental standard plans. Well, the intention is, and we made a lot of progress on renumbering these, but we will release them eventually. I'm just not sure when. Additionally, Steve's been working on details for a link slab, and he will tweak that design and as they're put in service. There's quite a bit of research at the structures lab on ultra-high performance concrete for the precast connections, which may get reflected in some of the developmental standards or some new ones. If you have any questions on the developmental or some of the new materials, contact Steve Nolan or the Structures Lab on the Ultra High Performance Concrete. They're having a great time breaking things with that. Looking ahead, pending field event, uh, investigations and completion of some research projects, the popular Florida slab beam may be made into a standard next year. We want to do a cursory review of some of the ones in service first, and we've been investigating other standards that are candidates for corrosion resistance. And for that, the cantilever retaining wall is top on our list. Uh, the program, I think, is pretty well updated, and we will have to make some minor tweaks to the standard for next year for that. Next year, we may reduce the depth of the edge beams on sidewalks, depending on how our research project with FIT comes out with the adhesive anchors. And hopefully we'll get some nice new equations for that as well. Now, as always, if you have any questions or ideas, please send them with pictures or drawings. They're always a help. And we appreciate suggestions anytime. But the internal, external reviews and all of that have made this a long process. So we, to get it out by November 1st, we really need stuff by July or August. So please just send it to us as you get ideas during the year. We're always willing to look at new standards, new ideas, any issues you have trying to build something, um, any concerns. We just need your, you to give some input. And if you want to know who to contact, Andre Pavlov, he's the supervisor. You know, he knows about everything. G1 is really strong in the structures program. She's been trying to update all these things by herself. But we finally got two new pe persons we got Joshua Turley. He's the one that worked on the catwalk. He comes to us from the building industry. He has an extensive experience there. He's a PE and has his master's degree. And Reza comes to us. Well, he's still working on his master's degree, but he has really strong programming skills and some good ideas. And I've enjoyed working with both of them over the last few months. So give us a call if you have any issues. And have a safe and happy rest of the holiday season. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Uh, this is Derwood Shepard again, just wrapping things up. Um, just as a reminder, we have recorded this webinar, and they will be posted on our website in the coming weeks. A notification will be sent out. Um, along with that, we'll also post a PDF copy of the slides and the Q&A um, as the questions had come in and, and answered in case you didn't catch back up or, or had a follow-up. Um, again, if you have any uh, questions afterwards um, as you review some of these changes, um, feel free to contact me or any of the uh, specific people who presented on the changes today. Thanks and have a great day.